RF man here. Today I want to discuss and demonstrate a new LD Moss pallet that I've been working on. This is a 6 meter pallet capable of operating from 50 to 54 megahertz. It's a thousand watt output and basically uses a single BLF 188XR extremely rugged transistor. I only use transistors purchased directly from Amplion. I do not use any counterfeit parts from China. Um, on the input side, I've got an input transformer. This has got a uh, 3 to 1 turns ratio, so the turns ratio squared equals the impedance ratio. So it's a 9 to 1 impedance transformation. I'm using some 20 gauge Teflon wire on one side and some silver plated copper braid on the other side, on the output side. Um, basically, this uses a ferrite to increase the impedance of the transformer and I'm going from high impedance on the input side which is 50 ohms to low impedance on the transistor side which is 6 ohms. So if you look in the data sheet at this frequency the input impedance of the transistor would be equal to 6 ohms. The output impedance is equal to 3 ohms. I'm using a single bias control here and I'm using gate shunt resistance for stabilization here. I've also used in some of my other designs gate series resistance and gate feedback resistance. On the output side, we're using a coax transform, a TLT transmission line transformer for the impedance transformation. Um, this is also a nine to one. Um, here, we're going from the low impedance which is 3 ohms to the high impedance, which is 50 ohms. That would be the impedance of your transmission line and your antenna, an antenna that's tuned at resonance. Um, I've got filter capacitors on the input side and RF choke um, going to the transformer. Now, this is a Guinella transformer, so it does not work the same way as a conventional transformer. I talk a little bit more about this in my video on a two meter board, uh, but basically it's current transformation, not impedance transformation in this case. And it uses a low impedance coax of 12 ohms and the total length of the coax and the bottom, it's a one to one bottom here, is less than an eighth of a waveform. So I'm going to go ahead and, and fire this up. I'm going to be transmitting at 50 megahertz in the AM band um, just to show the power output. And the output is flat from 50 to 54 megahertz. Um, so this is 50 megahertz AM. We'll be taking a look at the input power and input reflect and also the current and then the output power on my bird watt meter i'm using a bird 43 line section with a thousand watt slug as you can see there and i'm using a 1500 watt mfj dummy load i don't know if you can see it down there but that's the dummy load that we're using Okay, so we'll go ahead and key this up. Okay, we can see the input power is two watts. And the current, I will call that about 28 amps. And the output power, over a thousand watts. And we'll go ahead and look at the gain flatness over the frequency. The, the bandwidth here is only 4 megahertz, so we expect this to be pretty flat. And we can see, yeah, over a thousand watts. So that's basically an overview of the design. What I'll be doing in the next portion of this video is measuring the intermodulation distortion 
of the radio, the transceiver, and of the output amplifier. All right, now I'm back. Um, what I have here is a ICOM 736. That's what we used in the last test to look at the output power. And I borrowed this radio from a friend, so I really don't have much experience with it. Um, it's always a good idea to do some testing on the radio before you're going to go ahead and characterize a linear amplifier with it. So here I'm on lower sideband. 50 megahertz and I'm going to be performing a two-tone test uh, to see how linear the amplifier is. So when you do this type of test and I'm following the ARRL procedure you basically generate two different frequencies you can see there on channel one it's 1900 Hertz channel two let me just zoom in a little bit there you can see 700 Hertz so I'm generating two tones from the frequency generator. And what's important when you're doing this test is that the two frequencies need to be in phase and they need to be the same amplitude. And also they need to be uh, harmonically independent. So for example, you, it would not be a good idea to use 2000 Hertz as the high frequency and 1000 Hertz as the low frequency because 2000 Hertz is the second harmonic of 1000 Hertz. So you want to make sure that the two frequencies you use are, are not harmonics of each other. So that's the requirement. Now we're first going to do what I call a qualitative assessment. So you can see in lower sideband, you see the waveform on my oscilloscope. Uh, there's no crossover distortion. Uh, there's no flat topping. Typically, if you have high harmonic content, you'll see flat topping here on the top of the sine wave. And you'll see crossover distortion here. Um, so this is um, at a pretty low power level on the transceiver. I'm going to go ahead and turn the power level up. Okay, and what you see there is a lot of flat topping on the envelope of the modulated waveform. You see flat topping here, flat topping also down here. So it appears that this radio at the higher power output has some harmonic distortion. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this a little closer on the spectrum analyzer to uh, get more of a quantitative assessment. All right, so now we're going to look at the intermodulation distortion or IMD on the spectrum analyzer. Let me just quickly explain how I have this set up. The start frequency is at 49.99 megahertz, center frequency 50 megahertz, and the stop frequency is 50.01 megahertz. So the total span here is 20 kilohertz. And what you see here are the two tones that I'm generating, 700 hertz here, and 1900 Hertz here from the tone generator. You can hear the tones in the background. And from these two tones, harmonics are generated. Okay, so you can see the harmonic signals here. Um, this would be IMD2, which is not visible, then IMD3, IMD4, IMD5. Basically what happens is these frequencies add and subtract from each other and create these harmonics. On this side, here's IMD2, IMD3, IMD4, IMD5. So you can see the harmonics have a higher peak. Um, it's the odd harmonics typically and not the even harmonics. Now right now I am on lower sideband. So I'm on the lower side of the carrier, 50 megahertz. If I switch over to upper sideband, you see the two tones shift from the left to the right. So now 
on the, on the high side of 50 megahertz. And I'm just going to switch it back to lower sideband. It really doesn't matter. Now the figure of merit for intermodulation distortion, okay, the P3 product um, is 30 dB or better. Now I could put the markers on and measure this precisely, but I can also count the boxes. It's just easier that way. I'm at 10 dB per division. So you're looking at 10, 20, 30, I'll call it about 36 or so. That's not quite to the line there. So 36 dB or so. This one looks closer to 32 dB. So actually that's pretty good performance at low power. Now I'm going to turn the power level up. I'll turn this up slowly. And you start to see the two peaks rise because the output power is increasing. But what you also see are the harmonics increasing. Okay, so we started out with uh, 30 plus better on, on the harmonics here. Um, and now if we look at the P3 product, we're maybe, maybe 20 dB, okay? For IMD3, you see IMD5 has also come up. Also, the width got wider. Um, we typically call this splatter. Okay, so this correlates with what we saw on the oscilloscope when we turned up the power and we saw the flat topping. Okay, that was a sign of distortion doing the two-tone test. Uh, that was more of a qualitative assessment and now we see the same thing here as we turn up the power. We see that the IMD increases. This is more of a quantitative assessment. So at low power, it looks fine, looks good, actually. Um, but when you start to turn the power level up, there is a lot of distortion. Okay, so next we're going to measure the IMD of the linear amplifier, the 6 meter amplifier that I demonstrated earlier. Um, based on this, I'm not going to be able to test my amplifier at full power because the radio, the transceiver, as you can see, is, is distorting quite a bit. So we're going to have to limit the output power um, on my linear amplifier to get an accurate measure. All right, so now we're going to be measuring the IMD performance of the linear amplifier. I found that I'm able to drive the output up to about 400 watts or so before uh, the distortion from the radio starts to affect the IMD of the output. So I'm going to limit the test to 400 watts. Beyond that, the distortion that you saw in the other segment of the video will start to distort the output of the linear amplifier, right? It's a linear amplifier, so what you put in is what you get out. So we're going to go ahead and transmit at 400 watts, you can, you can see there, and we'll take a look basically at the IND performance at that wattage range. So here we see same thing. These are the two peaks that I'm generating. Okay, 700 Hertz, 1900 Hertz. Okay, and you can see the IMD. Uh, again, we're at 10 dB to, per division, so we'll just go ahead and count 10, 20, 30, that's a little bit over 30. This is above the line here. Um, and this one, 10, 20, that's about 30. So, so basically, um, pretty good IMD performance on this particular unit. And I will be offering these for sale on my website. I'll be posting them in the next few days. And they will be available for sale, I'll also offer them on eBay as well. So, RF man, thank you.